Okay, so I had this C-Max come into the shop, diagnosed it, had a bad high voltage battery. It's got excessive leakage on the negative side. Ran through some tests, even had Ford Engineering involved, confirmed it's a bad high voltage battery. So it's a $4,000 battery. Customer didn't want to fix the car, so I bought it from them cheap. So now I'm into this, trying to find out exactly what went wrong. And Ford doesn't let us test the high voltage stuff. So poking around, figured out how to do these tests. And I did isolate the fault to the high voltage battery. So I was watching one video of a guy working on a Prius and he mentioned what about the water intrusion. I'm gonna try to keep the license plate covered for protect the innocent here, but he had mentioned, hey, I had this Prius that got rear-ended and water got in there. And lo and behold, I check it out. Yeah, it did get rear-ended. That didn't cause our problem. Okay, checking resistance back to ground. So, this side of the battery is the leakage that I was measuring with the IDS. This other side of the battery, I'm trying to do this without killing myself, and no leakage. And now, contactor board, high voltage junction box, so I'm touching that pin, no leakage. So the leakage is on this side of the battery. That cable goes directly back in by the battery there. Okay, so obviously working on the high voltage battery is dangerous. I've got fake insulated gloves. This is 300 volt system. Okay, so with the scan tool, I was seeing 50,000 ohms of leakage on the negative side. So that's in the negative side of the battery. I'm going to ground this other lead to the battery frame and oop, it's even worse now, 23,000 ohms, well below acceptable. They want more than 195,000 ohms, realistically there should not be any leakage at all. When I check the positive side, there's no leakage. So this is dangerous, obviously being careful, but it's just DC power. It's somewhat harmless if it's you're not touching both legs but there we go we got some voltage leakage so this was causing red triangle stop safely now and it was also uh throwing code p zero a a six for uh, battery isolation fault so just in the interest of curiosity trying to go forward figure out exactly what happened i did pry the lid off the battery uh, on the C-Max, a little bit sketchy because it's got this foam gasket that is there to seal the airflow around the battery. So I kind of had to pry on the edges to get that to break free. Real, real careful, gentle, gentle, gentle. And now here we are inside the C-Max battery. So looking around and I see this one little piece of metal hanging out over here. Well, that don't look right. What's that thing doing? It looks like these little center tabs here. So, all right, the big reveal, it's obvious. We've got a complete failure of a cell. Look at all this goo all over the plastic there. And it's hard to see, but that very first cell on the left-hand side, you can see it's missing its little center piece. And I believe that's what Find it. That's what that is. I believe that piece, I believe it had a complete cell failure. So to me, it looks like this cell exploded and popped that little piece of metal out of the middle. You can see them real clear right there. We got it focused. And that one right on the left, if I can point to it, you can see the black, you can see the black hole where one of those is missing. So this appears to all be electrolyte and that electrolyte's definitely gonna give us uh, short to ground. You can see it's all over the frame. All that black stuff on the frame. 
So there we go. We got confirmation of the battery failure. Very rare. We do not see this stuff in C-Max hybrids very often. What led up to it? I have no idea. The customer does leave, did tell me they leave the vehicle sitting for weeks at a time while they're full-timing living in an RV. So uh, it had sat long enough that he had to replace the 12 volt battery. Uh, so he, they took, they replaced the 12 volt battery and initially uh, Ford shop thought it was the battery energy control module. So that's this module right here where these plug in is missing right now, but that's where that would go. Um, they replaced that obviously didn't fix it, but the thing about the strategy for isolation is it's based on how bad the, ice, the leakage is. So if you're up in the 200,000 ohms of isolation, it's not necessarily going to shut down the vehicle and it's not necessarily going to throw a fault. But as the customer continued driving, obviously we're just passing more and more current through this bad battery. And obviously this electrolyte's just going to keep spilling. And so, like I said, uh, when I was working out in the shop, had 50,000 ohms of leakage and it wouldn't let the vehicle start. I did get it started once, but I don't know what the leakage was when it uh, started and I was actually able to move it inside the shop because it was a tow in. But now we just saw 23,000 ohms and that's probably from me prying this and, you know, we probably jarred a little bit of electrolyte. So anyway, complete failure. Uh, I'm not going to try to swap cells. I don't know how many of these cells were damaged by electrolyte. Uh, I'm not really comfortable pulling this apart any further anyways. So at this point, I'm just going to be getting a battery for the car. And I don't know what to do with this battery. Maybe I will get courageous and disassemble it and part it out on eBay or something. Because we've still got a good high voltage junction board. We got a good DC DC converter module. Obviously, I've got a brand new battery energy battery electric control module. Uh, and I don't know. It seems like at least this bank of cells. So I think there's 38 in this. I mean, that's at least eight, what, 18, 19 cells that are still good. So I don't know. We'll see. But I just wanted to share with you how a C-Max hybrid battery failed because I've never seen it. And there it is. You guys, uh, you guys thinking what I'm thinking? Hmm. We'll repurpose the power plant.